What's up, guys? My name is Marcus Huskins, and thank you for joining me. As always, if you're enjoying this content, please go ahead, do me a favor, and hit that subscribe button, and I appreciate your support. Picking right up from where we left off, we're talking about how to use the sound set builder in Persona Studio One. If you haven't watched part one yet, I would definitely recommend watching part one because we've covered a lot of ground, covered a lot of the basic rules and understanding that you need to know in terms of how to work with the sound set builder. Now, that being said, let's just pick right up from where we left off and move along. I'm going to assume you've watched part one. Okay, so we have a folder that we created, we created the subfolders that we want, and we've already done a little bit of work. So for example, we have created a preset, we created an impact preset, we also created a pattern part, or rather a music loop that was generated from a pattern part, and it's got two variations. And that pattern part was created using this preset that we created using these one shots. But we did the whole entire thing while the folder was mounted as a sound set. So let's mount this folder as a sound set again. And now basically Studio One will be seeing this folder as if though it was a sound set that's installed on the system. I'm going to hop back for a moment. Let's go back into files for a moment and let me go back to that main tab. Let's actually right click and unmount this. So this is just like a regular folder. And anytime I do an action, I always like to refresh everything. Just a little tip. Now, when you're working with uh, Presence XT, if you have purchased the Presence XT editor add-on, you're able to create custom instruments. So this is a synth of a sound set or a, a product release that I'm working on with a really talented uh, composer and sound designer that is eventually going to be available in the Persona shop. So this particular pad is just a pad that's been designed and it's been created. Now notice that the actual file path for all of these samples, it's sitting somewhere external on my system. This is the kind of work in progress. You can play this, it's a playable patch, but I've chosen to have the samples still remain in their external path. Now once I'm completely happy with the way that this instrument is playing, Essentially, I want to encapsulate this in one file. And the way that we do that is by doing by using the SoundX container from within Presence XT. And this is also available in Impact and I believe Sample 1 as well. So when you are happy with this and you're happy with this particular preset functioning exactly the way you want, all you have to do is go to Program and you would go to Pack Program. And then in this case, I'm going to navigate to the area that I want this to go. So I'm going to put this directly in this folder from within my sound set. Now it's not currently mounted as a sound set, this folder. It's just a regular folder at the moment, but that's okay. So we're just going to export this here for now. It's going to be called dreampad.soundx. I'm going to click save and it's basically going to put a copy of that directly in here. Now, two things. First of all, always, always, always keep this one. I made the mistake where I mounted and then I, I basically lost my work if I wanted to go back to it. Always keep this and then I would have another song going where you could work with mounting the other one. Or in the case when you're confident with your workflow, you don't really need to worry about that. So let's just close this for now. Now if I open this and we go to SoundX, you'll notice that we have DreamPad within here. This is one file that has all of the information. So it offers copy protection and it also offers you the flexibility that you just have one file. And this can actually be shared on its own with other users outside of a sound set. You don't have to just use this for a sound set. So now that I've exported that, I'm gonna right click and let's mount the folder as a sound set again, keeping all this information the same. We're happy with that. Now I'm gonna go back and let me, let's just refresh this really quickly and I'm gonna move over to my sound sets. So now if I come to my example sound set folder, here is the SoundX file. Now if I drag and drop this, it loads just as if though it's a preset, but it's the whole entire preset that's including everything. So this becomes like the master SoundX file, which is like the master preset. But if we go to click the editor, we're not able to access the editor. So it's important that you have this, all of your settings, everything properly in terms of your layers and your zones and the tuning and everything. Now, once this is in the sound set, then I could go ahead and maybe I want to add some reverb and some modulation. We'll try this out. Let's record enable. Okay, so let's say that I'm happy with the way that this particular preset is sounding. At this point, we've got a couple of different options. One option would be that I could store a preset and I could give this a description. 
like I could say, this is a airy pad, good for use and whatever. And then basically that description would then display over here. Now, if I stored this locally on my system, I would have to open up a finder window and basically copy that preset and copy it over into the actual finder window over here. Let me scroll over and we want to go here. Here, I would have to copy that preset from my own internal folder structure that Studio One has set up. I'd have to copy it over here. So that's one option that we have. Uh, another option that we have is you can just export directly to that folder that we need. So I'm going to say dreamy, amazing pad. And now I'm going to navigate to the area on my system and we're gonna find that over here and it's in presets. Notice that we're sticking all of the presets, regardless of whether they're impact or presence, that we're sticking them all in the same folder. That's perfectly fine. You don't have to worry about that because when Studio One scans the sound set, it will essentially scan the folder structure and it will create the proper folder structure, but they will only be relevant to the instrument. So an impact preset will only show up in impact and a presence preset would only show up in presence. My tie would only show up in my tie, so on and so forth. So I'm going to click save. And now let me, Let's go right click and let's remove track and instrument. And if I come into my sound sets and I refresh these, we go into presets. You notice that we have dreamy, amazing pad. We drag and drop this over. Boom, dreamy, amazing pad. And any changes that we made like modulation and reverb, they are still there. But if we were to look at this SoundX file, the same way that we were to look at building our impact XT preset, we made sure that our folder was mounted as a sound set before we dragged the samples, the one shots from here onto the pads. Therefore, the file path is proper. In this case, we've done the same thing. We've basically dragged the dream pad over, which is the same as basically getting your one shots from within the sound set. And we did this when the folder was mounted as a sound set. Now we can modify this preset any way we want. I could make a bunch of different sound design presets. I could come in here, I could add the gator, I could do something like that. And then I could, in this case, if in it, whenever you're doing a lot of different things, in this case, it would be worth storing the preset. You could also use the instrument plus effects option. Uh, I have video content on this on my site. Just head over to Marcus Huskins Music and search it up. That would essentially allow you to store not just the instrument preset, but also any native Studio One effects that you wanted to include in this as well. We've covered a lot of different ground here. I'm gonna right click, remove track and instrument. We took a look at uh, creating a music loop. And keep in mind, we created a music loop by using a pattern part, but let's say that I just wanted to take this over here, um, my dreamy, amazing pad. I wanted to drag this in and I wanted to basically, let's come back to the beginning. Let's come out of loop mode. I will give myself a pre-count and let's record enable. And I have to make sure that my click is active. And let me quickly record something. Okay, actually, you know what? I won't even bother quantizing it. Let's just snip it off at the end here and we'll extend these parts to the end. So this is something that I've created with this preset. If I wanted to have uh, a music loop, so one of the music loops would be a pattern part, and then this one would be just a regular instrument part. Again, it's just dragging and dropping into our music loops folder while this is mounted, while this folder is mounted as a sound set. So now we have two music loops in this folder. Now I'm gonna right click, remove track and instrument. Okay, so the final step, we've gone ahead and we've created everything. We made sure that all of our relevant work was done while the folder was mounted as a sound set. Anytime we created any presets, anytime we dragged in audio files or the sound decks, we did it while the folder was mounted as a preset. The last stage, let's go back over here, is you need to unmount this and then essentially the very last stage is you right click and now you want to pack sound set from folder. Now, I wouldn't change anything here. You definitely wanna make sure that this is all proper from the beginning. And then I'm just going to click okay. And this is now going to create that sound set and it is going to package that sound set. And now this sound set is something that could be shared with other people or uploaded or whatever you wanna do. 
So with this selected, I'm gonna actually do a manual install. I'm just going to copy this. I'm gonna open up a new finder window and let's navigate to the area in my system where my sound sets are installed. And I've actually done a copy paste. So I've, uh, sorry, rather a cut and paste. And what did we call this? We called it, uh, what do we call it? Example sound set. Okay, so right over here, this is the sound set. Now basically, I'm just gonna save this quickly. I'm going to now restart Studio One and let's make sure that everything uh, happened exactly as it should and that our sound set is functioning properly. All right, so I've just restarted Studio One. Now what this means is that if we head over to the sound sets that the presets and everything has been scanned, I can click this, we get our icon. If I was to click this, it would open up our whatever website we've entered in. We have the name, we have the copyright, we have a little description below. Here's the way the sound sets work if you look at them through the browser. If I look here, we've got our two different beats. We can drag and drop those in. These have time stretching or rather tempo information. So these will time stretch accordingly. Those work as they should. Then we have our music loops. So I've got this one over here. This was created with our dreamy pad preset and everything carried across there. Then I've got this one. This was the drum pattern that we created. Keep in mind, this had two different variations and this loaded automatically, it loaded the proper preset that we created. And then we have our one shots. These could all be dragged over like this if we wanted to use one shots. These don't have any tempo information and we left these as wave files so they won't be stretched or anything like that. Perfect, now our presets, this is something I wanted to circle back to. I can drag and drop my Dreamy Air preset over here and this will load an instance. If we record enable this. Okay, and then if I wanted to load my impact preset that I created, let's drag and drop that in here. Now I have this one. Here's one thing that I wanted to point out. Remember how I said we wanted to pay attention to our folder structure for our presets. Notice I have a presets file and then I have another folder which I just named insert your name here. Because when I go to the presets, I don't wanna have my preset, my impact kit at the very bottom that I have to search for. I actually wanna have a subfolder. So if we take a look at this subfolder here, we made a subfolder simply by allocating that subfolder here. Now also notice that even though this folder contains uh, Impact XT and a Presence XT preset, that when we're in Impact, only the Impact preset is visible. If I hop over to Presence, only the Presence preset is visible. So the last thing that I will say is that if you want to properly check that a sound set is working, you definitely want to send it to a friend or install it on a separate system that has nothing to do with your main system that you're working on. You want to make sure that everything is functioning correctly. And once you do that, then that's it. This is the basics of using the sound set builder. And we covered a lot of ground in both of these videos. And it's quite possible that you may have to, uh, you know, watch each one of these multiple times. But I've basically been wanting to do this video for about a year. And I also wanted to make sure that I had all the relevant content. So if you're interested in music loops, just search on my site, Marcus Huskins Music, Music Loops. If you're interested in how to strip away the tempo metadata from one shots, you'll find that on my site. If you're interested in how to create an instrument plus effects preset, you can find that there. Anything that you're interested in that has to do with sound set, if you're interested in working with Presence XT, you'll also find information there as well. But I wanted to do a two-part series where basically anybody who's interested in building their own sound sets and using the sound set builder so that they can share their sound sets with the community would be able to have this information available to them. Anyways, that's all the time I have available for today. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Any questions or comments, please leave them down below. I will do my absolute best to get back to you. And as always, we will catch you in the next video. Cheers.